munchkins, my name is Crystal Bella and I'm a Dyspraxia Foundation Ambassador. So since the dawn of time, which was roughly about a year or two ago, uh, no, probably about a year ago now, a year ago, I started driving lessons and I am currently driving with the AA, but I didn't go through the AA to start driving with them, it was actually a friend who recommended me to this one guy who is awesome, he's driven or taught Yes, he's taught other people with dyspraxia before. Now, unfortunately, his other dyspraxic uh, students haven't quite been as successful as myself. Uh, I know one girl that he spoke of really, really did struggle and she actually ended up driving uh, an automatic car, which ended up being perfect for her. She struggled quite a lot with the whole clutch control as well as just focusing on more than one thing at a time and if you're having to focus on doing things like gears and stuff like that it really takes away the safety focus of the actual road itself which is number one important now they say that learning to drive in a manual car is like a vital thing to do because that way you can then drive any car you can drive a manual car and not have to worry about it um, sorry, you can drive an automatic car and not worry about it, but if you drive an automatic, you can't drive a manual, and well, yeah, that's just kind of a given, but just because you've learned to drive in an automatic doesn't make you any less of a good driver than someone who drives a manual, it just means that you drive the easier option. I know loads of people who drive uh, automatic cars, and they absolutely love it. In America, they pretty much just drive automatic cars. It's mostly just us guys in the UK that drive manual anymore. Even around Europe, yes, there are still a lot of people who drive manual, but there are a lot of automatic cars around there. I did a tiny bit of research, just, just a little bit, not much. So, driving. Tell you what, it is quite a big scary step to take in your life. It took me a long time to decide to do driving lessons. When I was 16, turning 17, whatever the legal age is, I can't remember anymore because I'm that old now, I could have started driving, but I didn't. In fact, I didn't even get a provisional license until I was 18, and that's just so I could go out drinking and not have to take a passport everywhere, because they're even more expensive to replace if you lose them. So it wasn't until I was 21, 22, just before I was turning 22, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna learn how to drive a car. And it was purely because I was in the process of wanting to move house, so I wanted to be able to drive myself to work if need be, if I live like a slight distance away or anything like that. It just makes life so much easier to be able to drive. The guy that I'm with now isn't the first person that I started driving with. I originally started driving when I was living in Southampton. And God, he was so annoying to drive with. He would literally get out like this whiteboard type thing and draw the road. Like proper sucking eggs type thing. Like. I'm not a child, I know how the road works, thank you very much. For some people, that's great if they need to visualise things, and to start off with I was like, right, okay, and he showed me the diagram of what the bike point is, what makes it a bike point, why we need it, why we need to like visually see what it looks like, and that was helpful. But he would just talk so much, and it would get to the point where he'd have a conversation with me, and I'm like, can I, can I just drive now? Because we're not even talking about the road anymore. So having someone that doesn't just talk dribble to you all the time is good. And someone you're comfortable around, there's no point in doing driving lessons around someone who you think might judge you, or you think is getting frustrated with you, or someone who just talks too much and you're kind of like, come on, I'm, I'm here to learn how to drive, not to talk about what you had for dinner. Now luckily, because my driving instructor is so encouraging and he has nothing but good things to say to me every single time. So to start off with, I was like, hey, I'm dyspraxic, do you know what that is? If, if not, this is what it is, and this where this is where I might struggle. So I, you know, we had that conversation. It was the first thing I told him because it's so important that you tell your driving instructor that you have a neurological disorder that may affect your coordinational skills because it could it could be a dangerous hazard if he doesn't know about that. So he needs to be fully aware of what he's dealing with. Slash she. I'm sorry. I'm saying he because my driving instructor is a guy. So because he was aware of that, at the end of my lesson, he was really, really good about it. He was so appraisaling. He was like, you know what, you've done really, really well. I took you onto the main road. I was worried that I'd have to keep you to small residential areas, but actually I feel very confident that you're gonna do really well in this. 
that for me was the greatest thing I could have possibly ever heard from a driving instructor. That is such a good thing, rather than, oh, I think you're struggling a little bit, I think I think next time maybe we should do this, and, you know, we should practice on that because you're not so great in this area, and that, that's neg that's negative things, I want to hear all the positive things, and then maybe talk about the negative things. In fact, he would tell, he would get me to tell him what I was bad at. And that's good, because then that's me recognising the things that I need to work on. So I would say, okay, my clutch control when we stop and start is a little bit rusty, I need to practice on that. So I would like if we did lots of roundabouts, lots of residential areas where there's lots of stopping and starting, he was like, do you know what? That's perfect. That is exactly what we're going to do. And if he says I'm wrong by saying something, and he's like, actually, you're fine in that area, it's just your confidence, we'll just do some more practicing that, or actually it'd be better if we did this rather than that because this, that and the other. Having a good conversation with your instructor is so important. And I would say this about anything, about learning anything, even if it's not driving, it's like at school or something, or not school, a conversation, it's, it's so, so important. A lot of people are so scared of doing their driving lessons. I've had so many of you guys message me saying, that you're doing driving lessons and you just don't think it's going anywhere and you're so nervous to go to your next lesson, like you just don't want to do it anymore. And I get that, I really, really do, because there have been times where I've just finished a lesson and thought, that was absolutely awful. And I'm so angry with myself, I'll come home and I'll say to my boyfriend, I'll say what went wrong and if I stalled once or twice or a multiple million times, then I will feel really bummed out about it. But then he reminds me that actually, Making mistakes is such a good thing because you can only learn from your mistakes and when it comes to driving you have to make mistakes to learn how to do something. So what we've been doing is I've got my insurance on his car, which I hate driving more than anything, but I've recently come to like it and what we've done is we've gone to a car park, a big car park, where there aren't always people there, It's there's like a football pitch, a rugby pitch and like a running track, so there's not always that many people there unless there's events going on. So we go there. And we want to work on my clutch control first off before I drive his car because when he first got the car he struggled as well so it's like okay because at first I thought I was just going to drive straight from work to home but he was like no <laughs> that's not happening and goodness was it good that he didn't let me do that because wow me driving his car was a very big struggle so I can drive my instructor's car perfectly well because I've gotten so used to the way that car works, I've gotten so used to controlling that car, I'm fine with it, like, I can do dual carriageways, I can do loads of roundabouts, and I'm pretty much perfectly fine with it. But with his car, I have come to learn that every car is very different from one another. Now, his car is actually a perfect example to learn how to drive in, because the bike point is so specific. Like, my goodness, I've never, like, I've driven more than one car before, and they're usually alright, but his is so damn, like, on point in terms of, like, you have to be exact, otherwise that's it. You're gonna, you're gonna stall every, like, 20 seconds, which is exactly what I did. So, what we've been doing for the past month is going to that car park. Yes, it's been a month and I haven't left that car park yet. Around the car park there are arrows every couple of yards or feet. And what we've done is, or what I've done, is I drive to every point and then I stop. And then I go again, so I can get that clutch control, that start-stop control. And I'll tell you what, a few weeks ago, I haven't, hadn't driven it in a few weeks because there was like a fun fair there. And I was getting so frustrated because I was stalling it, like constantly, so, so much. And after a few weeks, the carnival's been there, I've gone back and it's been almost perfect. In the space of an hour, I think I stalled about four times. Apart from when I drove round to the second car park, there's like a road that goes behind all the football pitches. And I went there and there were people there and so I was getting really nervous and I had to do a three point turn to go back the other way and I stalled like five times. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing but there were people there and actually I was just panicking because I know I can drive, I can drive perfectly well, it's just his car I'm not so confident in because I don't know it very well. So it just goes to show that just because I can't drive one particular car doesn't mean I can't drive at all. So the car that you're learning in or whatever, 
you know, it might be difficult for you, but there may be another car out there that suits you, which is why I want to go back to the whole uh, automatic thing. Just because manual doesn't work for you doesn't mean automatic won't. There are always, always ways around things. There's always another alternative. Well, not completely always, but almost always. When I first started driving my instructor's car, we did a hill stop and start. That was the first thing we did. And those are so, so good to do because it is literally just clutch control. Everyone knows how to drive, how to steer, and okay, for us it's a little bit difficult on some days compared to others, but as long as you can control the car and you're confident that it will go when you tell it to, that's it. That is the only thing that everyone really worries about. It's not can I turn the corner and not crash into someone walking their dog. Although you might be a little bit nervous of that. There have been days where I've thought, maybe I shouldn't drive today because I've had a lot of moments, shall we say. But you know what? I still drove anyway, and to start off with that was a bit rusty. I was rushing everything, I was going too fast at changing gears, too fast at pulling away. And then he was kind of like, okay, something's obviously not quite right today, so can we just slow down a bit? That was it. It's simply just slowing down, relaxing. I would recommend, now this is just straight off the top of my head right now, I would recommend before you go to a driving lesson, just have some chill time. Have something to drink, nothing caffeinated because that will just heighten your senses and then anxiety starts to come along. So if you can, try and avoid anything caffeinated before you go driving. And just kind of maybe listen to your favourite music, get nice and calm and think to yourself that you can do this. The only thing that's going to cause any form of anxiety is what's going to cause any issues that you're going to have. So you will learn to control that car. You will learn to control many cars and every time you drive a new car, no matter how long you've been driving, there will be a bit of a blip. You'll get used to it over time. It is literally just one of those things that you put time and effort into and it takes time, it takes time for everyone. Well, it's the same for everyone. We have moments when things just don't go the way we want them to. I'm just rambling on right now. Relax yourself. Driving is perfectly fine. We just need to learn to control the cars. Most importantly, to control ourselves. If there's any particular aspect of driving that you want me to talk about, put it in the comments below and I'll try my best to respond to as many as possible. If there becomes like a running theme with a type of topic area uh, that you guys want me to discuss and I'll probably end up putting it in a video rather than just responding the same thing to everyone. So I will keep an eye on those. Okay, time for me to go now. Bye bye, bye bye, bye.